Good evening, everybody. We'll call this meeting to order. Uh, first order of business is roll call. Diana, could you do a roll call, please? Your Worship, I can confirm that I, Deputy Clerk Diana Wilson, am in attendance in the township office. For those participating by video conference, please answer present when your name is called. Mayor Manel. Present. Deputy Mayor Jaguer. Present. Councillor Widner. Present. Councillor Moore. Present. Councillor Cerna. Present. Councillor Lewis. Present. Councillor Galinsky. Present. Chief Administrative Officer Clerk Michelle Casavecchia Summers. Present. Director of Fire and Emergency Services Brent Smith. Present. Director of Public Works Matt Sweetland. Present. Director of Development Services Adam Betteridge. Present. Director of Finance Arun Mohili. Present. Manager of IT Cecil Coxon. Present. Drainage Superintendent Bob Lopez. Present. That's everyone. Thank you. Uh, next order is the disclosure of pecuniary interest and general nature thereof. And I have some, I could. Mark. Item D3 and um, D4 and E11 all pertaining to drains. Okay, thank you. So noted. Mayor Manel, I have one as well. Go ahead, Jess. PW2124, item number 20 on page 52, Tate Drain. Okay, so noted. Thank you. The minutes from April 8th, was there any errors or omissions? Seeing none, mover and seconder for those minutes, please. Move it. Move by Moore, seconder. I'll second it. Fair enough. All in favor. Councillor Widner. Yes. Councillor Moore. Yes. Councillor Cerna. Yes. Councillor Lewis. Yes. Councillor Galinsky. Yes. Deputy Mayor Jaguer. Yes. Mayor Manel. Yes. That's carried. Thank you. And before we get in, I see John Michael is here. John Michael, uh, certainly I hear about the passing of your father with great regrets. Uh, we've had a long history with Malahide and the Street family and especially with your dad and a uh, great relationship and, and we, we, we sorely miss. So please pass on our condolences to you and your family. Thank you, Your Worship. Next, we have a public meeting. So I need a mover and seconder. Public meeting concerning the zoning bylaw amendment application of Lorraine Renton, Agent Mike Wall related to the property located at lot 54 and 55 plat, plan 226 be called to order at 732. Mover and seconder. I'll move it. Move by Widner, seconder. Second. Yeah. Lewis, all in favor? Councillor Widner? Yes. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Serna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Galinsky? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jaguer? Yes. Mayor Manel? Yes. That's carried. Thank you. The purpose of the public meeting is to consider an application requiring a flood proofing, flood proofing requirement fulfill. Our applicant is Lorraine Renton, Mike Wallace agent. Part lot 226, slot 54, 55 known as 3143 Colon Street, Fort Bruce. Diana, can you advise and confirm the method and date of notice, please? Yes, Your Worship. Notice of the meeting was given in the prescribed manner by publication in the Elmer Express on March 31st and April the 7th. In addition, affected property owners within 120 meters were sent a notice by prepaid first class mail posted 20 days prior to the meeting. Thank you. Adam, can you give us an overview? Certainly, uh, thank you, Your Worship. This zoning bylaw amendment application has been submitted for the purpose of allowing an existing residential cottage to be rebuilt uh, to its same dimensions and general location on the subject property, which the general public will recognize as the property which contains the eating establishment known as the pier in Port Bruce. The property contains that, uh, the property that contains that establishment um, also contains three existing residential cottages. 
The, the subject and purpose of this application is the, the southernmost cottage, which is identified on the report photo on page 32 of tonight's agenda. That cottage needs significant repairs and the property owner's agent, uh, Mr. Mike Wall, has consulted with township staff and the conservation authority with regard to reconstruction of that building, given its location within a 100 year uh, flood level area of the Catfish Creek. Uh, the application is required because the existing cottages are considered legal non-conforming uses given the property's current commercial zoning. So in order to allow for the dwellings to be repaired or re reconstructed, uh, planning permission is required. In my report, I had provided that no comments have been received in response to the neighborhood circulation. However, this afternoon we, uh, we did receive correspondence from Mr. Tom Don. Uh, part owner of neighboring lands to the west known as uh, 3191 Beach Drive. I will read for counsel and to those uh, tuning in on YouTube what Mr. Down provided in his correspondence. It's short, so I will read that now. So he writes, notice of, a, a notice of objection. I object to the proposal to build a new house at 3143 Collins Street, Port Bruce, on the same footprint as the existing cottage. I object on the grounds that the new cottage does not meet the setback requirements of the zoning bylaws. The existing structure is only 11 inches from the southerly property line. Uh, there is plenty of room on the property to build a house that satisfies the setback requirements of the bylaw. Additionally, the Catfish Creek Conservation Authority will require that the new house be built several feet higher than the existing cottage and our cottage next door as they deem it to be on a floodplain. This will be unsightly from our cottage, and I believe that it will negatively affect the value of our property next door, signs Tom Don, and he provides his, his mailing address. Um, so in response to Mr. Down's um, correspondence, it is common for zoning bylaws to allow for existing structures that don't comply with the precise setbacks to be repaired or replaced, provided that such distance is not further contravened. And what Mr. Down is referring to is a legal non-complying setback. And as provided in my report, I do speak to our existing zoning requirement that allows any reconstruction of those on-site buildings or structures to occur, provided that the structure um, A, does not result in an increase in the total ground floor area, or B, and, and this is the piece that Mr. Down has expressed concerns about, uh, B, that construction can occur, provided there is no further contravention of any existing non-compliant setbacks or other zoning requirements. Um, Mr. Down also referenced building height. The zoning requirement for building height allows dwellings, including Mr. Down's cottage next door, to reach but not exceed 10.5 meters in height or almost 34 feet. Um, to visualize that, it is essentially three stories from the ground. So the height increase that may be imposed by the Catfish Creek Conservation Authority for flood for flood measures or um, other necessary means is all already allowed uh, on many of the residential properties in Port Bruce. And as I mentioned previously, also to uh, Mr. Down's property. Um, it, in further reference to Mr. Down's objection, I should also reiterate to council that the precise location of all buildings and structures will be required to be confirmed to our building department through a legal survey ensuring that uh, there would not be such further contravening or contravention of any non-compliant setbacks. Um, as, as provided in my report, but for those tuning in who might not have, have had an opportunity to review, staff has discussed development plans with the owner's agent and the Catfish Creek Conservation Authority. Concerns regarding the construction of a dwelling within a flood prone area have been considered in the context of the surrounding area which is comprised of existing historic structures and uses, cottages, dwellings, and, and that such. And reconstruction of the cottage can occur provided the Catfish Creek Conservation Authority is satisfied with the necessary flood proofing and elevation measures. And they have provided that in the correspondence. It is further recommended that uh, given the properties within a commercial zone and within a 100 year flood level of the Catfish Creek, uh, that the property be subject to a site plan agreement prior to any reconstruction occurring. A site plan agreement can further secure the requirements of the Catfish Creek Conservation Authority and the township, especially considering that the precise location of the reconstructed cottage and associated facilities 
is not yet known. Uh, to summarize, in the hazard areas of Port Bruce, it is the general intent of the official plan, in my opinion, that the land use policies achieve a balance between the interests of flooding and natural hazards, um, as well as those interests of property owners who have lawfully established buildings and structures and uses. The draft bylaw provides for the three existing cottages to be recognized as permitted uses and that the buildings and structures can be repaired or reconstructed, uh, sorry, pardon me, reconstructed provided uh, such does not involve any increase in the total ground floor area of those buildings and structures beyond what currently exists and subject to a site plan agreement. Um, thank you, Your Worship. I'll end there, but I am able to answer any questions that Council may have. Thank you, Adam. And after all of that, I'm gathering your recommendation is still to approve. Yes, it is. Okay. All right. Uh, I don't see the, the uh, applicant was here. Any questions from Council? Seeing none. Mover and second of the public meeting relating to zoning bylaw amendment application of Lorraine Renton, Agent Mike Wall relating to property located at lot 54, 55 plan 226, be adjourned and council reconvene at 7.40. Mover and seconder. Over. Lewis. Seconder. Okay. Aguirre, all in favor? Councillor Widner. Yes. Councillor Moore. Yes. Councillor Serna. Yes. Councillor Lewis. Yes. Councillor Galinsky. Yes. Deputy Mayor Javier. Yes. Mayor Manel. Yes. Carried. Now that we've reconvened a mover and second report number DS2121 entitled Zoning Bylaw Amendment Application of Lorraine Renton be received and the Zoning by Bylaw Amendment Application D14Z0321 of Lorraine Renton relating to the property located at lot 5455 plan 226 and known as municipality as 3143 Collins Street to allow an existing residential cottage built to be rebuilt to its same dimensions and location on the subject property be approved for the reasons set out in this report. Move it. Moved by Lewis, seconder. No, I'll second it. Serna, all in favor. Councillor Widner. Yes. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Serna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Galinsky? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jaguer? Yes. Mayor Manel? Yes. That's carried. Thank you. Now we have another public meeting. Uh, this worship? is the uh, your Worship, there's one more bylaw for the, the zoning bylaw. Oh, okay. There's one on another page. All right. Sorry. Thanks, Diana. You're always keeping me up. <laughs> uh, okay. A mover and seconder that bylaw number 21-31 being a bylaw to amend zoning bylaw number 18-22 insofar as relates to the property owned by Lorraine Renton located at lot 54-55 plan 226 be given a first, second, third reading properly signed and sealed. Move, Move by Lewis. Second. Second by Widner. All in favor. Councillor Widner. Yes. Councillor Moore. Yes. Councillor Serna. Yes. Councillor Lewis. Yes. Councillor Galinsky. Yes. Deputy Mayor Shaguer. Yes. Mayor Manel. Yes. That's carried. Thank you. Uh, next, we have a minor variance uh, by uh, Roy and Betty Picard. Application D13 MV0221, Plan 55, uh, Park Block L, Market Street, uh, Market Block known as 3621 Imperial Road, Port Bruce. So we'll need a mover and second of the Committee of Adjustment of the Towns of Malahide be called to order, 743. And that Mayor Mental be appointed Chairperson of the Committee of Adjustment. Moore uh -huh. and Serna, all in favor? Councillor Widner? Yes. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Serna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Galinsky? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jaguer? Yes. Mayor Manel? Yes. That's carried. Thank you. Adam, can you give us an overview of this application, please? 
Certainly, Mr. Chair, the application for minor variance has been submitted in order to allow for the construction of a single detached dwelling not meeting the minimum rear yard requirement uh, for, a, for a, a new dwelling. Um, the intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw to establish a certain requirement for a backyard is so that is, is for one thing to maintain neighborhood character, but also, also for a uh, backyard amenity area and privacy. So uh, from a planning perspective, and this has been circulated and reviewed accordingly, um, the dwelling needs to be pushed back further on the property in order to make room for uh, the necessary weeping bed for the private septic system. So pushing the house back is certainly uh, one thing, but from the planning point of view, the zoning bylaw intent is that we main, maintain some sort of backyard amenity area. Uh, and if the committee were to look at page 41 of tonight's agenda package, that's the updated site sketch for the building and proposed detached garage. And through review of the, the building plans, the homeowner has uh, agreed to push the detached garage further closest to the road, which will essentially allow for some backyard amenity area for barbecuing, gathering, or what have you, so that all of their amenity space isn't in the front yard. Um, this has been reviewed by the Catfish Creek Con uh, Conservation Authority, similar to the, the prior zoning bylaw amendment application. They have no concerns, although there will be uh, flood proofing measures incorporated into the building permit and through the Conservation Authority's permit also. Um, it was also circulated to the county engineering department given its frontage on a county road. They also have no concerns. So from a planning perspective, I believe this meets the four tests for minor variance and believe that it should be approved. I did um, recommend to the committee that two conditions be assigned. One which requires the building permit or the dwelling to be constructed within two years. Uh, and secondly, that when the building permit comes in, it's in accordance with the plans that have been submitted with this application, specifically what is in front of the committee this evening on page 41. So unless there's any further questions from the committee or, or those in the audience, which there's none, uh, there's nothing further, at, nothing further to add to my report. Okay, thank you. Uh, the applicant I don't see is here. Uh, Diane, is there any comments received from outside agencies? Uh your Worship, just the comments that were noted by the director, as well as uh, David Barry sent in a letter saying that he had no objections. Okay, thank you. Any questions from council? I have one. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. Um, through uh, to Adam, to, to put a, a limit on it that has to be done in two years, um, especially with uh, time being as they are, is that not... Uh, almost mission impossible. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, the, the intent of putting a time frame on a minor variance is because we're not, we're not necessarily, we're not specifically changing the zoning of the property. We're, we're granting a, um, a planning permission to allow them to build something. And in my opinion, the intent of a minor variance is you need to build something, you wanna build it now. Um, it doesn't meet the precise requirements. Let them build it and then it's done. I don't want, I don't want a minor variance granted in, tw uh, excuse me, 2021 and 2028 comes around. We've got new staff, new committee or new council and, so and someone goes to build something in waves of, of minor variance that was granted a number of years ago. So I think two years uh, granted. The intent of that is not to say that oh, your time's up. The two years is, is lapsed yesterday. You're, you've got to go back through the process. What it really is intended for is to... Um, intent for the applicant or the proponent to, 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 to construct something that they, they want to start construction already. If, if they reach that two years and they need extra time, I would not see it as an issue to grant them a further extension. But um, I think one year would be hard pressed. I think two years is uh, rather achievable in my opinion. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I don't think that's an issue, Rick. I think the, uh, the Picards are ready to go and, and that's why they have this application before us. No, I hope I hope they bought their lumber already, whatever they need. <laughs> yeah, those and probably a thousand other ones that are showing yeah. up at the, uh, the sticker price. Oh yeah, yeah, no kidding. Any other questions from council? There is a recommendation before you, so a mover and second for the recommendation, please. I'll, I'll move it. Serna and I'll move it. Dwinsky, all in favor? Councillor Widner. Yes. Councillor Moore. Yes. Councillor Serna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Golinski? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jaguar? 
Yes. Mayor Minnell? Yes. That's carried. Thank you. Now we're uh, moving to the second of the Committee of Adjustment of the Township of Malahide be adjourned and Council reconvene. Seven fifty. Seconder. Move it. Second. Moore and. I'll second it. Linsky, all in favor? Councillor Widner? Yes. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Serna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Galinsky? Deputy Mayor Jaguer? Yes. Mayor Manel? Yes. Carried. Thank you. Next, we have a quarter revision. So I need a mover in the center of the council of the Township of Malhide does hereby appoint the following members to sit on the quarter revision for the Stanley Drain. Mayor Dave Mental Chair, the Deputy Mayor Dominique Jaguer, and Councilor Rick Serna. So anyone can do this. Mover and seconder, please. Move it. Mover and Lewis, all in favor? Councilor Widner. Oh. Councilor Moore. Yes. Councilor Serna? Yes. Councilor Lewis? Yes. Councilor Galinsky? Deputy Mayor Jaguer? Yes. Mayor Manel? Yes. That carried. Thank you. So, oh, John Michael, uh, can you uh, just outline the nature of the proposed work? Sure, Your Worship. Um, tonight's uh, meeting is the quarter revision, so it deals with the costs on the Staley drain. Uh, it's an existing open drain that we're cleaning out and reconstructing and do new constructing new laneway culverts and road crossings from Catfish Creek to the east side of Walker Road. Your Worship? The scope of the Sorry. We, we Diana, do need, was there any objections received? We do need that resolution going into um, oh. the Board of Revision. Which one is that? Oh, Number sorry, 10. sorry. Yes, mover and second the quarter revision for the Stanley Drain be called to order at 751. I'll move. Jaguar, I'll move. Jaguar I'll and Serna, all in favor? Jaguar. Councillor Jaguar? Yes. Councillor Serna? Yes. Mayor Minnell? Yes. Carried. Thank you. Was there any uh, uh, comments or, or objections to this drain? There's no appeals that I know of, Your Worship. Okay. None received. And no one else is here that I see. Any questions from council? Seeing none. Mover and seconder. This is for the ones on the committee. Quarter revision members of Stanley Drain to hereby accept the recommendations of the drainage engineer, John M. Spreet, and Spreet's associates, for, and further does hereby confirm the drainage assessment as outlined in the report, drainage engineer, February 12th, 2021. I'll move it. Serna and Jaguar, all in favor? Councillor Serna? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jaguar? Yes. Mayor Minnell? Yes. Carried. Thank you. And still from the committee, move and second of the quarter revision of the Stanley Drain be adjourned. Council reconvene at 7.52. Jaguar. And Serna, all in favor? Councillor Serna? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jaguar? Yes. Mayor Minnell? Yes. That's carried. And finally, now that we're back, move and second of the tender of the Stanley Drain be awarded to Robert M. Simons Construction in the amount of $139,049.11, subject to the expiration of appeal period, subject to no appeals having been received related to the Stanley Drain. Question. Question, go ahead, Mark. Who is Robert M. Simon Construction? Can someone give me some background on them, please? Bob, are you there? Yes, Your Worship. Question from, from Max. To you, Your Worship, uh, my understanding is that they're based out of Waterford, Ontario. They have been around for probably 50 or 60 years, and my understanding is they have a pretty good reputation for the work they do. Thank you. Well, Any other questions from Council? Mover and seconder for the recommendation. Move it. Move by Moore, seconder. Move it. Lewis, all in favor. Councillor Moore. 
Yes. <laughs> Councillor Serna. <laughs> yes. Councillor Lewis. Yes. Councillor Golinski. Deputy Mayor Jaguer. Yes. Mayor Manel. Yes. That's carried. Next, we have another quarter of vision. So a mover on the side of the council of the town of Malahide does hereby appoint the following members to sit on the quarter of revision for the Hipley drain, Hipley dance drain, branch E. Mayor Dave Mellon, chair, Deputy Mayor Dominique Jaguer, and Central Elgin Councillor Fiona Wynn. Welcome, Fiona. Thank you. So mover and seconder for that one, please. Anybody can do it. I'll move it. Moved by Lewis, seconder. I'll second it then. Fair enough. All in favor. <laughs> Councillor Moore. Yes. Councillor Serna. Yes. Councillor Lewis. Yes. Councillor Galinsky. Yes. Deputy Mayor Jaguer. Yes. Mayor Manel. Yes. Carrie. Thank you. And for those members on the committee that the quarter revision for the Hipley Drain Branch E be called to order. It's 7.55. Where are we? Dominique? And I'll move it. You'll, and you'll, you, you'll be appointed as chairman as well. I'll move that. We did, did that, that already. One. Okay, sorry. And so we we do need to call the quarter revision to be called to order at 7.55. So moved by Jaguer, seconded by Wynn. All in favor? Councilor Wynn? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jaguer? Yes. Mayor Manel? Yes. Thank you. Okay, uh, John Michael, can you give us a, a proposed drainage work, please? Sure, Your Worship. Uh, this is a new drain. This is a branch of the Hipley Dance Drain. It starts at the, the Hipley Drain, Hipley Dance Drain, which is north of Ron McNeil Line and runs south along Springwater Road, crosses the intersection of Ron McNeil and Springwater Road and provides a stub to a couple properties on the, the southeast corner. Uh, it came about as a result of a petition signed by the road authority. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Uh, was there any comments or objections received, Diana? Nothing was re received, Your Worship. Okay, any questions from council members? Seeing none. For, the, for those in the committee, move in the second of the quarter revision, members of the Hipley Dance Drain Branch E do hereby accept the recommendations of drainage engineer John M. Spreet, Spreet's associates, and further does hereby confirm the drainage assessment as outlined in the report of the drainage engineer dated February 8th, 2021. Uh, Wynn and uh, Jaguer, all in favor? Councillor Wynn? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jaguer? Yes. Mayor Manel? Yes. That's carried. Thank you. Once again, for the committee, moving to the second quarter revision related to the Hipley Durant's brain be adjourned and council reconvene at 7.56. Um, Jaguer and Wynn, all, all in favor? Councillor Wynn? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jaguer? Yes. Mayor Manel? Yes. Carried. Thank you. Now we're back in open session. So a mover and second of the tender of the Hipley Dance Drain Branch E be awarded to Robert M. Simons Construction in the amount of $66,238.19. Subject to the expiration of appeal period, subject to no appeals have been received related to the Hipley Dance Drain Branch E. Mover and second for that one. Anybody? Right. Lewis and. I'll second it. Linsky, all in favor. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Serna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Galinsky? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jaguer? Yes. Mayor Manel? Yes. That's carried. Thank you. And thank you, Fiona, for your attendance. Thank you very much for having me. You all have a good evening. Good to see you again. You too. Yeah, thank you, John Michael. And once again, thank, thank you. you. Pass on my our condolences to your family. Oh well, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Brent, you're the next one. 
Yes, thank you, Your Worship and Council. Uh, I have the March activity report before you for Malhide Fire Services. Uh, as you can see, we trend down again. Uh, again. Whether this is part and parcel due to the changes we made in our modified tiered response agreement last year, uh, and I think some of it is that effective, uh, affected by that, and I believe also part of it is most departments are seeing a, a trend downward due to COVID. So um, we do, however, seem to see fairly, the calls we are getting are significant uh, and we've had a few fires. So I would be happy to answer any questions council may have of this report. Thank you, Brent. Questions for Brent on his report? Seeing none, mover and second report number F2103 entitled Emergency Services Activity Report for March be received. Move it. Moved by Widner, seconder. Jabai Jaguar, all in favor. Councillor Widner. Yes. Councillor Moore. Yes. Councillor Serna. Yes. Councillor Lewis. Yes. Councillor Galinsky. Deputy Mayor Jaguar. Yes. Mayor Manel. Yes. That's carried. Thank you. Thank you. Got yeah, a comment, Dave, if I could. Go ahead. Yeah, I just want to say the fire department did a good job on that fire in Springfield. They did a pretty good response time from the hall for that one. Um, they did a good job saving the house. I mean, it's impossible to always do it, but it looked really did the best they could do. So no sorry for the people that owned it, but that happens. But it could have been worse. So they did a good job. Thank you. Didn't spread to any neighbors. That's the important thing. That's right. Okay, Matt, you've got the, the next one on the petition for drainage work. Uh, that's correct. Um, good evening, uh, Your Worship and Council. Uh, I have two reports for you this evening, uh, the first of which speaks to a drainage petition the township received by a landowner on Sawmill Road. Uh, as Council will recall, a landowner on Nova Scotia Line had prior petition for a new branch of the Tate drain to be constructed to accommodate a legal outlet for drainage and spree associates were appointed to prepare uh, that engineer's report. So referring to the maps included with the staff report, uh, over the course of the consultation process, an additional landowner has petitioned to incorporate two existing outlet pipes into the report to ensure that uh, drainage is maintained over their land as the property is subject, currently subject to uh, a severance. So as Spree Associates are currently preparing the engineer's report on the original petition, staff are recommending they be appointed to address this additional petition within that report. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that council may have. Okay. Thank you, Matt. Questions from Matt on the, uh, the drain? None. Mover and second report number PW2124 entitled Petition for Drainage Underhill be received. And that Mike DeVos, uh, engineer of Spree Associates, be a appointed to prepare the engineer's report for the Underhill petition. Noted that the petitioner is requesting this petition to be incorporated in the engineer's report that is currently being prepared for the construction of a new branch of the Tate drain. I'll move it. Moved by Lewis, seconder. I'll second it. Fair enough, all in favor. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Serna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jaguar? Yes. Mayor Manel? Yes. Carried. Thank you. Second report, Matt? Uh, yes, through you, Your Worship. Uh, as part of the annual tenders program relating to maintenance and capital works, uh, staff called tenders for the supply and placement of road granulars, which closed in early April. Uh, the specifics of the supply and place gravel program are listed in the staff report for the various road segments to receive spring gravel and capital construction gravel, which amount to approximately uh, 26,000 tons of granular A, 26,000 tons of granular B, and 1,000 tons of three-quarter inch clear stone. So the graph that's included in the report shows that compared to last year, we are seeing about a 34, 34.5% increase in granular A unit pricing. Uh, and I'd like to note, however, that 2020 did see a 6% decrease in that same uh, unit rate. Uh, supplemental to the staff report, I can note that the uh, three, quarter, uh, three quarter inch clear stone pricing has experienced a similar price increase of around 30% in 
uh, but the granular B pricing is actually reduced by about 4% over last year's pricing. So, well, overall, this is a large unit rate increase. Um, as mentioned earlier this evening in a similar conversation about lumber pricing, uh, I can confirm that uh, this is very in line with the supplier material pricing that is being experienced throughout the construction industry this year. Uh, this total tendered amount for supply and place of road granular for the work comes in uh, at $744,685 for the described uh, work and does conform to the various uh, budget line items for gravel maintenance and capital construction. Uh, accordingly, staff recommend an award of the contract to the low bidder from CR Chittick Construction. Uh, I would like to note, however, that these quantities are estimated and staff would actively monitor these items as the work progresses, all to ensure that uh, works do remain within budget. With that, I'd like to refer back to council and can answer any questions you may have. Okay, thank you, Matt. Uh, I think it should be noted that uh, the gravel has doubled over the last seven years and uh, over that makes about a 50% increase every year. So to those uh, critiques that are saying, why can't you keep it down to 2% inflation? rate that uh, when we're faced with doubling or 15% increasing gravel, that makes it very challenging for us. So just to get off my soapbox and we'll put it back to council. Any question for council to Matt? Question, Mr. Mayor. Is the HST, ahead, Max. Is the HST recoverable from our gov upper government? Uh, through you or your worship, a portion of that HST uh, is recoverable. Uh, the majority portion of it is. Thank you. Any other questions? I just have one if I could. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I've had a concern brought to me from the west end of Springfield that some of the people that live there about the speeds are getting higher again. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome, Max. I wanted to <laughs> wonder, first, we'd like to know if they could move the signs further to the west, but um, could we set up maybe a speed traffic counter to see if there actually is a problem out there and to see what's going on with Council of Blessing? And the OPP have been informed they're going to put the sign out there whenever they get it ready. So we I have had speed traps in town, Councillor Whitner, not recently, not I would say within the last year, but prior to that, they were kind of on a regular basis coming and going at their leisure. Yeah. Anyway, that's if we get that. I don't know if that's possible to set that up. We have that cable system where you can check the speed and the Traffic, is that something we could do? Certainly, I think we can pass that on to uh, the OPP detachment to, to look into that, Michelle. Uh, your Worship, through you, the concerns have been expressed already to the OPP, and as Councillor Widner has indicated, they are going to be putting up the speed sign as soon as it comes out of winter storage. So in the next uh, couple of weeks, well, hopefully we will see that there. I believe what Councillor Widner is looking for is for the road department to monitor the actual speeds and report back on whether on essentially the statistics on on what the nature of the speeding is or how severe that's correct and uh through your worship that uh, that's actually a traffic counter that that we use that uh in the one that you're speaking of now but we can set up uh we could at council's direction set up to monitor those speeds as well I would like to also add that this is not just at the west end of Springfield. It's all the way through Springfield, east and west, and to the south. Can we leave that in your hands to come back with a report on, on how people are behaving, Matt? Uh, absolutely. Well, we can uh, put a map together with some target, targeted locations that uh, we can review and report back to Council on that. Okay. Appreciate it. Any other questions for Matt? Dominique. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you to Matt. Um, back to the uh, issue of gravel costs, which I, I suspect even beyond COVID is still going to be on a steady increase. So is it time to uh, review uh, different aspects of uh, gravel, whether it's uh, winter maintenance, which you know I understand throws a lot of gravel, that precious costly gravel, uh, into the ditch, uh, whether it's service levels also, or even uh, speed uh, limits on gravel roads, and um, even like new technologies. And this is not my area of expertise, but in, in most fields, 
there's been um, different different approaches, different uh, methodologies and innovation. So is, is it time to review this as opposed to continuing on a, on a steady state and steady approach, which appears to be very, very costly for a lot of roads that get very little usage, you know, being a lot of dead ends. Any thoughts on that? Um, through you, Your Worship, uh, that you're on the right track, I would say, uh, with uh, what the timing that we're looking at. Uh, the current gravel program is based on the uh, road needs study that was completed, which suggests maintenance activities for the legislations that we follow and industry standards. So uh, right now, actually, we're approaching a new uh, roads needs study, which would identify those updates that have been experienced in the industry over the last few years, uh, would all be part of that. And uh, annually, I guess, um, through the, the various construction seasons, being spring gravel and through winter maintenance, staff do regularly uh, meet to, to discuss those opportunities where we're losing uh, and where we're winning uh, in, the, in those respects. So uh, it is good timing to be looking at those things and, um, and we will definitely be keeping that in mind and can report back to council together with the uh, Roads Needs Study to see how these programs are being uh, managed across the industry and, and make our recommendations on how we should be proceeding as well. Chairman Al, I have a question. Go ahead, Jeff. The, um, I haven't heard uh, anything mentioned about, uh, I don't think these particular roads that we're talking about today are uh, in line for possible uh, uh, tar and chip, but do we have other roads that are close to uh, being uh, tar and chipped uh, without uh, having to rebuild them completely? Uh, through you, Your Worship, I can look back into the schedule of that, of that program and report back to council where the various stages of those roads are. Uh, as I do understand that there are a lot that a, a number of roads that have stalled, uh, like Councillor Lindsay has, has indicated due to the uh, inadequate base to undertake such program, but I'd be happy to look into that further and uh, report back. Thank you. Any other questions from Matt? Well, certainly we, we've experienced in the past that it's cheaper to maintain a tar and chip road than it is a, a gravel road. And so that our gravel conversion has been going on for probably 40 years now and much better than it was in 1977, I can tell you that. Yep. Okay, another question, mover and second report number PW21 and 25 entitled tender results 2021 supply and placement of road granular be received. The tender for the 2021 supplement and placement of road granular be awarded to CR Chittick Construction of Thorndale in the amount of $744,685 plus HST. And the mayor and clerk be authorized to enter an agreement with CR Quiddick Construction for the purpose of completing the 2021 supply and placement of road granular program. I'll move it. Well, second by Widner, second by Lewis. All in favor? Councillor Widner? Yes. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Cerna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Golinski? Deputy Mayor Jaguer? Yes. Mayor Minnell? Yes. That's carried. Thank you. And Arun, you're doing the next one? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have before you a report on the annual investments update. Um, good evening, Council. Uh, my first report tonight is a annual update on the investments portfolio held by the township. As you can see, all three groups of investments, short-term, medium, as well as long-term, have fared quite well in spite of it being quite the eventful year. Last year, um, there was obviously a huge um, shift in the markets after the COVID pandemic hit the world, but then there was a good rally later on in the year as news of the vaccinations came out. And as well, our provincial and federal governments have been doing a lot to boost the economy and keep it out of the depths of recession. So that has helped keep the markets on a positive note. And you see that in this year's returns, as well as prior years, overall, you can see that the investment portfolio has, doing, has been doing 
a, a steady growth uh, for the last five years since we started in 2015, in fact. Any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Very well. Uh, you're doing much better than my financial analyst. Last, re <laughs> last year, I see I, I could renew it for 0.25%. So you're getting 6 and 7%. That's really well. Anyway, questions for Arun. Being done, mover and cider report number FIN 2106 entitled Annual Report on Township Investments Be Received. Blow it. Moved by Moore, seconded by Glinsky. All in favor? Councillor Widner? Yes. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Serna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Glinsky? Deputy Mayor Jaguer? Yes. Mayor Minnell? Yes. That's carried. Thank you. And Arun on the COVID funding? Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, the next report in front of you is a summary of the use of the COVID-19 related funding that the township received from the provincial government. There has been a, a steady allocation that came through um, in 2020, 2020 uh, and uh, as you can see on page two of the report, we received 195, 100 altogether, and uh, we have used 162, 935 thus far. Uh, a large chunk of that was in the waiver of interest and penalty that council had approved uh, when the pandemic started in March, and we had waived that up until September. So that was the biggest, um, I guess, chunk of loss of revenue. There were um, other, of course, uh, impacts due to the closure of our facilities and, and the enhanced cleaning that is going to continue on into 2021. So as at the end of 2020, we had about 32,000 unspent from the previous year's allocation. The provincial direction so far has not been that it is a time-limited funding. It is essentially restricted to the purpose. As long as it is related to COVID-related impacts, we are permitted to carry forward the funding. And therefore, we have. Um, it was found prudent to not to try and make sure that we have some uh, as much left over as we could. And in the meantime, the province has announced additional funding. They had initially announced about a 30, some 30,000, and then they announced another allocation so that we have about 163,818 uh, new allocation plus the leftover funds so that we have 195,983, uh, which of course, from the looks of how we are proceeding thus far, we will certainly be spending on enhanced cleaning as well as there will be some impacts of the closures of some facilities. Um, there has been a recent emergency control group meeting where certain decisions were made. So that will also um, result in some expenses or uh, managing of the situation throughout the township. And so these funds will make sure that we are not uh, impacting the regular operations of the township. We are able to carry on all our operations and capital projects as well without having to limit or reallocate funds that we typically have in our operating or capital budgets. And as of now, this is all that the province or the federal government has announced. They have, um, what we have seen generally is that there has been a lot of support from both levels of government in terms of, for example, higher gas tax allocations or various other grants have been enhanced. So any application-based grants that are available out there, they are being more, uh, either they are being increased in quantity or the process of approval seems to be uh, speeded up a little bit. As a result, staff has definitely been applying for anything that's out there and there has been success on some areas and uh, in some cases we are still waiting for example the broadband fund we are still waiting for further uh, approvals in that area so there's certainly a lot of support being provided in terms of uh, providing the funding to municipalities to be able to carry out operations or to give a boost to the economy by carrying out infrastructure projects or larger long-term impacting kind of projects so that locally and regionally there is um, 
there is an economic uh, strengthening and continuation of business. Any questions I'll be happy to answer. Okay, thank you, Irene, Irene for that. That's a good report. Any questions for Arun? And then move in second report number FIN 2107 titled COVID-19 related funding be received. I'll move it. Moved by Glinsky, seconder. I'll second it. Serna, all in favor. Councillor Widner? Yes. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Serna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Glinsky? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jaguer? Yes. Mayor Manel? Yes. That's carried. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have committees and outside boards. We've got uh, community complex and two from the long point. Any questions or comments on any one of these uh, reports? Mover and second are be noted and filed. I'll move it. Jaguar, I'll second. Widner and, and Jaguar, all in favor? Councillor Widner? Yes. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Serna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Galinsky? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jaguer? Yes. Mayor Manel? Yes. That's carried. Thank you. Next we have correspondence and there's 12 items on correspondence. Anyone wish to make comment, support? I have one, I guess. Redmer. Item number three, Township of Springwater, about the clean fuel standards and impacting land use restrictions. I'm not quite sure what it's all about, but if it is what it states, it doesn't sound very good for some of the farming operations. So unless anyone has any more information on it, I think maybe we should support it. Michelle, can you uh, expand on that one? Unfortunately, Your Worship, I don't have any more information than just what was outlined in the correspondence. It, I would agree with Councillor Widner that um, it could be interpreted a couple different ways, but it is definitely suggesting that there are impacts. Okay. So you're supporting number three there, Mark? Yes. Any other questions? Comments? So we've got a recommendation to support number three. So receive and file one through 12. Mover and second of that, please. I'll move it. I'll move it. Serna and Widner, all in favor? Councillor Widner? Yes. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Serna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Galinsky? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jaguer? Yes. Mayor Manel? Yes. That's carried. Thank you. And next we have the Police Services Board on other business. Uh, who's doing that one, Michelle? I can speak briefly to it, Your Worship. Council will recall at the last council meeting, there was a presentation made from representatives of the Elgin Group Police Services Board uh, as a follow-up to some uh, changes that have been made to the Police Services Act and related to the composition of the board. And those representatives seeking uh, feedback from Malahide Council as they are with all of the other councils that are involved in the Elgin Group. Um, and there is a recent piece of correspondence uh, included in your agenda package this evening, indicating that there are a number of the other municipalities that have indicated uh, that they're in support of the status quo comp composition for the Police Services Board. And that we're, um, the, sorry, the representatives are looking for feedback from Mallow High Council in terms of where um, your position is. Uh, council had asked for some more time so that they can consult with some members of their, the public and the community to see if there are any issue, issues or concerns. And it's back in your hands this evening, your worship and council to be able to provide some feedback to the representatives of the police services board, recognizing that um, it's a very short turnaround time. So there, once a decision is made in terms of which direction, uh, which composition would be the preferred, uh, there would have to actually be additional uh, bylaws and information resolutions from the uh, member municipalities. And so uh, the representatives are hoping that they would get feedback from Malahide Council this evening in order to facilitate the timelines as a decision has to be made before June 1st. Thanks, Michelle. 
anybody I've talked to was very, very happy with the OBP and their service they've got and uh, are happy with the status quo. So I'd certainly be in favor of leaving the status quo. Any other comments? Agree with you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Dominique? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, I think the few residents I've had a chance to speak to actually knew very little uh, about this board. So uh, we're not really in a position to comment. And I, I think that for now that warrants the status quo because with, without knowing much about um, the, the type of discussions and decisions or oversight um, that uh, is performed by the board, it would be premature to suggest uh, any changes. So I think uh, I too would support the status quo. Um, there was other correspondence in the package about um, a potential review of the compensation. And um, I would definitely support the review just of the overall budget. So not just the compensation, but the, the, the sort of operating budget of the board. And um, I would I also like to request that moving forward, then the minutes of the board be added and be provided to council in our package, like uh, in, our, in our committees and outside, outside board uh, section, like we've received minutes for a long point, for example. So I think that might help us bring a little bit more awareness about the, what the board does. Okay, I think we can do that. Any other questions or comments? Okay, mover and seconder, the Valhide Township Council does hereby support maintaining the current composition of the Elgin Group Police Service Board and a copy of this resolution be forwarded to all members of the Elgin Group Police Services Board. Move it. Moved by mover, seconder. I'll second it. Sir, no, all in favor. Councillor Widner? Yes. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Serna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Kalinsky? Deputy Mayor Jaguer? Yes. Mayor Manel? Yes. That's carried. Thank you. Next, we have the uh, the complex budget. Any We did have our meeting there a week ago. Any questions or comments on the budget? Seeing none, mover and second of the draft 2021 operating budget for East Elgin Community Complex in the amount of 554196 and draft 2021 capital budget for the EEC in the amount of 68000 be approved. Move it. Moved by Lewis, seconder. I'll Move second it. Serna, all in favor. Councilor Widner. Yes. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Serna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Galinsky? <laughs> Deputy Mayor Jaguer? Yes. Mayor Minnell? Yes. That's carried. You. And your worship, just for clarification, sorry, I should have probably mentioned it before you passed the motion, but the town of Elmer did also approve the budget at their meeting this past Monday evening. Okay, thanks, Michelle. Uh, now the Terrace Lodge Fundraising Committee. Uh, do you want to speak to that, uh, Dominique? Um, sure, Mr. Mayor. The uh, I think the letter is self-explanatory, and we certainly the the committee would appreciate um, as many funds as we receive from the, from the community to go towards uh, the residents as opposed towards expenses. So uh, we would appreciate considering waiving the fee that we incurred. Thank you. Well, and as Michelle said, we don't waive fees, but we can give uh, grants. And certainly I think this is a, one where we do condone uh, something that's good for the, the public good of, of Malahide Township. So certainly I would be in favor of granting the, the $150 to the, uh, the Terrace Lodge Fundraising Committee. Questions to either staff or to, to Dominique? Rick? Yeah, I have one. Um, do, we, do we not have any money left over in our, in our uh, donation? pot like like to, to these guys are incurring a great expense and i think rather than just give them 150 bucks can't we throw them at least 500 so we don't look so cheap michelle um your worship how much the uh, council wishes to donate to the terrace lodge fund 
fundraising group is entirely up to you. Um, certainly, uh, I asked, and the treasurer has uh, signed back on with us. Um, I had asked her to double check to let us know what the amount was left in the miscellaneous grants or miscellaneous donation account, uh, as we do set an amount there each year. And so I'll maybe pass it over to the treasurer to be able to advise council on what funds are available. Simply through you, Mr. Mayor, um, we have uh, council approved uh, some donations uh, during budget committee discussions. However, we have about $1,000 that we always hold aside for any requests that come to us through the year. So we certainly have that. And uh, besides that, there is again the potential that some of the approved grants may not actually be disbursed, but that I do not have a number for that as yet because last year we had that experience because some of the events got canceled. The organizations did not need the money because they did not have those events. So it's likely that may occur, but as of now, the unallocated funds, we certainly have a thousand dollars that were kept aside for any requests that may come forward through the year. Okay, thanks, Arun. And I, I would suggest that we, we grant the $150. I do know there is another request coming through the, the uh, Rural School Alliance that was Marcus Ryan and Sally Martin are on that. And they would like to have Malahide Community Place sometime in 2021 once the COVID has passed. And they will be also requesting uh, a grant to, to, uh, to compensate for whatever costs there are there. But I would suggest that in our next budget, we do consider making a, a donation to the Terrace Lodge Fundraising Committee. I know that uh, when Terrace Lodge was built in 77, Malahide, uh, they sponsored a room. And so I think we need to consider that going forward. But for the time being, I think we should just look after the $150. So any other questions or comments? In regard to uh, the uh, School Alliance, can we send a letter, Michelle, to Sally? stating this is the, our policy that we don't uh, waive fees, but we will certainly look at grants and certainly the School Alliance is something that that is benefited to all of Malahide Township residents, especially Springfield school people. Absolutely, Your Worship. We can forward along the parameters of the grant program for sure. Okay, thank you. Mover and second, the request received from the Terrace Lodge Fundraising Committee for the reimbursement of the South Dorchester Community Hall rental fee for $150 be supported being know that such fundraising, that that funding is considered and will be funded pursuant to the Grants Community Group Program. Move uh, second. Glinski and... So second. Move, uh, Widner, all in favor? Councillor Widner? Yes. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Serna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Glinski? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jaguer? Yes. Mayor Manel? Yes. That's carried. Thank you. And Mr. Mayor, I will welcome all councillors to match that donation personally. You're welcome to do so anytime. Donate to terracelodge.ca. Thank you, Dominique. Uh, bylaws. There's no bylaws. There's no closed session. Anything else before we close? Nothing from staff, Your Worship. Did you have a, something, Dominique? Sure, Mr. Mayor, if I may. Um, so Councillor Lewis and I have received uh, numerous requests to, uh, from uh, the Port Bruce community to look into issues of uh, traffic safety. So in, in the latest uh, correspondence, there was a letter of support with almost 100 uh, signatures to say that this is a, a pressing issue. So if I could, uh, through you, request that um, our staff and work with in coordination with the uh, county staff to uh, examine the issue uh, and uh, come back and propose some, uh, some solutions that we could explore, would appreciate. So we need to send a letter off to, to the county engineer in that regard, Michelle? Um, your Worship, uh, through you, Staff have had some preliminary discussions uh, with county staff as well as with uh, the deputy mayor and, and Councillor Lewis. 
Um, and there have been some ideas and some potential options that have been looked at. However, there needs to be some more research and some more data gathered prior to taking any action. So if Council just wants to give staff direction to continue to explore different options to address uh, the traffic concerns of the residents, then staff will be coming back in the future with a report and recommendations uh, for whatever is warranted at that point in time. Yeah, I think that's appropriate. Do you need a motion for that? Uh, we can take that as staff direction. If council would staff direction. Board, that's okay. fine either way. Staff yeah. direction is good. Okay. Anything yeah. else? Thank you. Mover and seconder bylaw number 2132 being confirmatory bylaw be given a first, second, third reading and finally sealed. Move it. Mover and I'll second it. Serna, all in favor. Councillor Widner? Yes. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Serna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Galinsky? No. Oh. Deputy Mayor Jaguer? Yes. Mayor Minnell? Yes. Carried. Thank you. And finally, the council will adjourn its meeting at 8.35 to meet again on May 6, 2020 at 7.30. Galinsky and Widner, all in favor. <laughs> Councillor Widner. Yes. Councillor Moore. Yes. Councillor Serna. Yes. Councillor Lewis. Yes. Councillor Galinsky. Yes. Deputy Mayor Jaguer. Yes. Mayor Minnell. Yes. And that's carried. Okay. Thank you all for attending. Stay safe, folks. Yeah, take care. Good night. Good night.